Hey everyone, OmniPower here, and today we're going to talk about one of the most important and asked about systems in Lost Ark. Engravings. What are engravings? They are passive effect bonuses that affect your class's performance in battle. Simple, right? Well, for some reason, they confuse a lot of people, and I hope this video helps break it down for you. I've also put together a new page in my class breakdown spreadsheet covering all the information in this video, plus descriptions for each class and combat engraving. Feel free to check it out in the description below. Now let's get started. Engravings are first unlocked at level 26 or 27 by speaking to Thyrain while doing the main story quest. After you see the unlock notification, you can now access the engravings menu by holding down the Alt key and pressing I on your keyboard. In this window, you'll be able to browse the entire catalog of combat and class bonus engravings. They can be sorted alphabetically by name or by their current node level. You will also notice most of them will be grayed out. This is because you need to read engraving recipes in order to unlock and enhance your knowledge about them. While going through the various quests and dungeons of the game, you've most likely obtained a few of these engraving recipe books. They come in four potential colors each pertaining to a different tier. Here are the tiers in increasing order by rarity. First up, we have green, also known as uncommon. Then we have blue, also known as rare. Following, we have purple, also known as epic. And lastly, we have orange, also known as legendary. Now, in order to unlock each tier of an engraving, you must read 20 recipe books for each tier, but they can't be read out of order. So first, you need to read 20 green books to unlock tier one, in order to be able to read any of the blue books. The same concept applies when going from blue to purple and from purple to orange. Once an engraving is learned, it can be equipped in the two engraving slots in your loadout. You can even equip two of the same learned engraving to unlock even more nodes for it. Now, engravings don't only come from books. They can also be found in ability stones and jewelry. The Ability Stone system is also unlocked around level 26 or 27. Basically, when you obtain one of these stones in your inventory, they will be imbued with two random positive engravings and one random negative engraving. The positive engravings can be any of the ones listed in the Combat Bonus tab, while the negative ones aren't currently listed there. Luckily, we only have to worry about four negative engravings. These are Attack Power Reduction, Attack Speed Reduction, defense reduction, and move speed reduction. So when you cut an ability stone, you ideally want to end up with a stone that has as many possible nodes applied to the two positive engravings and as few as possible applied to the negative engraving. Once all the possible nodes in the stones are filled, it can now be equipped by your character, granting them stat bonuses as well as the amount of positive and negative nodes unlocked in the stone. Obviously, you're at the mercy of the RNG system with these stones, so you will find yourself cutting several of them while looking for an ideal one. When it comes to jewelry, it's even simpler. Jewelry cannot be altered in any way. It's a take it or leave it situation. So you have to pick and choose your jewelry based on the stat bonuses as well as their randomly assigned engraving nodes. As you progress through the game, you will notice that the higher the tier and rarity of the jewelry, the higher the stat bonuses, as well as the amount of possible engraving nodes that they can grant you. You're also at the mercy of the RNG system when it comes to obtaining ideal jewelry from drops. But luckily, you always have the in-game auction house to browse through other players' offerings or even sell your own. So now we know what engravings are and the many ways of unlocking them. So let's put all that knowledge into practice. Let me explain my approach when it comes to setting up my engraving builds. Here's an example of the type of build you're going to shoot for once you reach the early stages of tier three content in the game. You will notice that there are levels for the positive and negative engravings. The higher the level of the positive engravings, the stronger the bonuses they will grant your character. You will need to unlock five nodes per level. So a level three engraving would require 15 nodes total. Any excess nodes after 15 will show up as a red number at the end of the engraving UI. You also have to be careful because the same level up system applies to the negative effects. Try not to stack too many negative nodes once you're in the later stages of the game 
because other players can inspect your character before accepting you into their raid parties. And if they see too many red engravings, they will most likely not take a chance on you due to you being a potential liability. You can avoid this by paying attention to which negative engraving is locked into the items you plan to equip or buy. Try to mix and match between them to get as many positive engravings to max level while getting as few as possible of the negative ones. It's definitely a balancing act, but it can be achieved and it gets easier the more you practice. My method of approaching a final engravings build starts first with the class bonus engraving. Once I've decided which of the two class engravings I want to use for my character, I check my current recipe book progress for that engraving. Then I buy books from the auction house to supplement the amount I might be missing to reach the highest level that I can afford. A green tier engraving will give you three nodes. Blue will give you six, purple will give you nine, and orange will give you 12. One thing to know about class engravings is that they will not appear on ability stones. They can only be obtained from books and jewelry. Because of this, you will most likely always equip one or two class engravings in your loadout to get your desired level one through level three bonus. My next step is the ability stone. I have to decide what are the two most important combat bonus engravings that I want for my class. First, I look through the stones I've saved up or check the auction house for the ones that match my needs. I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with the various search and sorting features offered by this system in order to find items that best fit your needs. Once I have the stone I want, I will try my best to cut it to have a minimum of plus six plus six on both positive engravings, as well as a maximum of plus three on the negative engraving. If that stone doesn't match my minimum specifications, I dismantle it because I can no longer sell it once it is cut. I can use the fragments after dismantling to trade for other RNG stones. If I run out of stones, I'll just buy another and another until my cutting process gives me my desired results. Depending on the amount of nodes that I've unlocked by now, I have to evaluate what are the nodes that I have to fill to reach level 3 on the engravings that I'm working on. Then I have to determine the highest amount I can get from my current jewelry tier. For example, for tier 3 jewelry that are legendary, the highest you will be able to get is plus 3 plus 3 for positive engravings and a random negative engraving ranging from negative 1 to negative 3. The other thing to keep in mind is the order of importance as far as main stats and substats for each kind of jewelry. Necklaces offer the highest main and substats followed by earrings and then rings. Keep in mind you can only equip one necklace, two earrings, and two rings. Equip earrings and rings also have to have different names. You cannot equip two of each with the same name. Eventually, when we're in the real endgame, we will be able to make engraving builds made up of five level three engravings. But for now, focus on learning the basics and shooting for three level three engravings and one level one when you get to tier three in your journey. This is when it will matter most because this is where the difficulty really starts to ramp up. And we're done. Congratulations, you are now an expert in engravings. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you enjoyed this content. You can also watch me live at twitch.tv slash omnipower. Keep powering up my friends and I'll see you on the next one.